Hi again. Uh, so I was just thinking um, I should do a PS to the other video I did about INFJ, very INFJ in their own way. Because I, I was thinking about um, some, I thought I should give you some more sort of real life anecdotes to illustrate what the heck I'm talking about because that was a really, one really minor one. Um, and for an alleged INFJ too, so not too convincing I guess. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't be. Um, and speaking of that too, I, I also want to tell a little bit of stories because it's fun and maybe some people will feel, you know, some particularly INFJs will feel comforted by it or they'll identify with it or I don't know. Um, and also because I think that uh, it, you, a lot of you guys out there must be thinking I'm completely full of shit about um, having known so many INFJs. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, there have to be a lot of people out there who are saying to themselves, I am one, and I've only ever known two in my entire life, so how she could possibly uh, know so many eyes is, is just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I could understand that. I think I can explain it, though. Um, and I think also I'm, I'm very good at this. I'm good at this typing, and I verified in, in the many, many cases with people directly about this. So... Um, anyway, that's one for another video. I'm going to do another video explaining uh, how it is that I know so many of the INs, why I think it is, and there are many factors to that. Um, but back to this thing, uh, the very the weird little things that INFJs do. Um, so not so long after I made the video, I got a call from a really dear uh, INFJ friend who I've been seeing, um, probably the one I've been seeing the most of uh, this past year and a half or so and she's so cute she was talking this this also harkens back a little bit to the other video I made earlier today about uh, what is at the crux of the difference in tidiness between um, J's and P's and what she was talking about is how uh, she's been having she has a hard time with sleeping and, and she had a, a very hard time lately and she said you know I think the reason is I've been so excited about reading uh, this she's been reading this book I don't know the name of it but I bet a bunch of you will um, what's her name Mary Kondo M Mary K O N D O some organizational guru <laughs> who's written some books on the subject and my friend is all into it as I'm sure plenty of uh, not just INFJs but definitely plenty of INFJs would be into this um, and and she's been explaining to me this concept of um, just just some quite intriguing ideas in organ you know in organization that of course I might be me I've never paid any attention to I've never really I've not thought about it as much as I should and uh, let alone to anywhere to the extent my friend does and um, she was introduced me to this concept of like sparking joy you know the idea that you shouldn't have anything in your house that doesn't bring you joy. And there's this other key concept in this book, apparently, that I need to read, too. I think it sounds really interesting. Saying that, um, what, that you, you, you should only need, <laughs> this does appeal to me, too, because I hate it so much. I hate doing this. I hate tidying. Uh, so Mary Kondo has this, some concept of you should only need to tidy once in your life, because if you do it right, that's all you'll ever need to do. <laughs> I was like, oh, just once? Wow. But it's a but it's quite a process and it's this very intensive. It sounds kind of spiritually based a bit. It's definitely a bigger. It's definitely of appeal to people who are big picture thinkers and and think about the meaning of everything. And uh, the idea is that you, I, if I'm not mistaken, is that you go through your all your belongings one by one and you really consider each one and you consider what it means to you and you consider, you know, does this bring me joy? You know, do do I need to hang on to this? Is this and and then like really winnow out there with a, a great deal of um, thought you winnow out the inessential so that all you're left with is exactly what you really is good for you to you've decided is good and thoughtfully have decided is good to have around you and eat, of course all those things have sort of systems for how they're to be organized and then all you need to do is just maintain those little systems and not thoughtlessly ever add to or thoughtlessly mess up um, the arrangement of those things so uh, anyway even even I could get into this my friend you know she wants to help me with that and uh, 
So she's telling me all about it. She knows I love to hear about it. And she told, she told me that she said, she said, I think that part of the reason I've been having trouble sleeping the last few days is because I get into bed and I'm just so excited. I'm so excited about the holidays coming when I can purge and purge and purge. And she said, I'm just lying awake, like thinking of all these creative ideas for how I can, I can rearrange things. And I can't wait to just divest myself of all of this flotsam that is just weighing me down to the past or distracting me or, or whatever. I just can't wait to get rid of it. So she's just can't. That's what she's looking forward to. So like, that's a good example, right? And again, she's another one of the many INFJs I know who is not uh, a total neat freak, clean freak, you know, spotless, you know, it's spotless under her fridge kind of J's. She's not. Um, but she is quite clean and she's quite organized, but she's got, you know, really in anyway. I've talked about her uh, her before and whatever. But, um, yeah, so she's really interested in, in losing some things. She just can't wait. And I would say this is another very good example of, you know, P versus J moment. So she is all that I've just described. So, so, so excited about the big purge coming up over the holidays of all her stuff. Ah, she doesn't need any more. Ah, and get it out of her face. And I'm like, hmm. I am making no moves. I'm not in a hurry. I didn't run out and buy the book, but I'm definitely listening to her and I'm definitely enjoying thinking about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about organizing. Am I doing that much of it? No, not really. You know, some, but uh, it's pretty primitive, pretty primitive. Um, I don't have the same gusto for it at all, but I love to hear her excitement about it and I love to hear about it. And the meaning, the meaning that this condo person is sort of investing the process with and um, imbuing that experience of sorting and winnowing with, and uh, that's pretty cool. So there's, you know, there you go. There's a the little everyday kind of example of a difference. You know, she's actually going to do it. Like I know this friend is going to do it. She's going to schedule it. She's going to plan again. She won't be too uptight. It's not that she won't change the plan or that she won't alter the plan several times in a day. But the thing is, she will have a plan. <laughs> you know, like she'll have a plan. Um, we people, people, nah, we we have plans too, and we need to. We have plans. Sometimes we're we're very motivated and for a particular thing in our own private lives to have a plan that's quite exact and you know exacting. But it's a difference of emphasis. That's it. Um, also, I'm thinking about uh, what I was speaking about earlier in the, the crux of the J versus P difference. I was thinking of another really dear INFJ friend I see quite a bit of. Um, and thinking of her place and uh, I was just over there a couple of weeks ago and it's really her decor is and her fashion sense are really rock and roll like they're really cool it's really cool it's really a lot of like vintage and really cut like strange and colorful and um, rare curiosities and and different and and Everything has a story in her house. Like every single thing has some kind of a story of like what yard sale she got it from or how she refurbished this or that or whatever. It's all really interesting, colorful. There's nothing milk toast about it. And yet gorgeously done, you know, done with a really terrific eye. She's got a wicked sense of style. And she and I like to, like we actually like to have whole conversations about our frocks. You know, like we like to talk about our outfits. It's a real topic, you know, of conversation of composing outfits and why this works with that and sort of reverse engineering aesthetics, which is like, again, a huge, hugely fun thing for a lot of um, INFJs and ENFPs to talk about with each other. And um, anyhow, so I was sitting there at her house and she was showing me her, her wonderful new buffet bar that she just got and told me the whole story about how she came. She'd been eyeing it and and the dealer and like how she came to decide and and she was going to like redo the, the handles on it and you know just details about all that and we're really getting into it and um and I start to sort of look around her apartment and look at how she has lots of gatherings of things it's very cluttery and she too like she'll totally let her she has she doesn't think twice about letting her kitchen go straight to hell and deeply to hell when she's really busy with work for a couple of weeks like she does not give a crap and that's you know she and any you know, any P could, could ident you know, would know what such a kitchen is like, you know, to have one. But here's the thing that, that makes her an I, you know, one of the many, many, many things that makes her an I and a J is that when I look around her place and I look at all those little fascinating little objects, each of which has a story. I mean, I, I put the question to her. I said, hey, hmm, 
lady. Uh, you know, when I look around, it strikes me. Tell me if this is true. It strikes me that every single thing in here, you've got all this eclectic stuff all over. The, you've got like piles of very interesting, gorgeous blankets and, and just, you know, collections of things. But I said, it seems, is it, would it not be the case that if I were to, um, that there is nothing in here, uh, in, in your place that hasn't been chosen, that hasn't been, you know, thought about, uh, you know, you went through a thoughtful process of choosing the thing in the first place, fixing it up or altering it to be exactly the way you want and the way you envisioned it with your massive creativity, and then got it, saw to it that that was done the way you wanted, or you did it yourself, or you learned how to do it and did it yourself, but you made, you made it happen, you created the effect, right, in a very concrete way, um, and then it's it's meaningful to you. It's meaningful on all these different levels to you. The, the reasons why it, these objects are beautiful to you. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the way I put it to her. I said, is, is it not the case that everything in this apartment is either useful or beautiful, or, and preferably both? And is it also not the case that you've thought about pretty much every single thing that I can see and view in this great big double room here? And she said, yes. You know, that's very INFJ. Very NFJ. It could be ENFJ too, um, and it could be uh, it, could, it, could, it arguably could be with a, a bunch of the different um, J types, but um, also the ES, like the the FJs, I would say, yeah, the FJs, um, because they tend to take a lot of care with their environments as well. They really care that things be kind of the way they want. Um, but the NFJs are, are yeah, can many, 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 many of them, the majority of them, are not extremely fussy about everything in their environment. But they do tend to be more thoughtful on the whole. So there's that. Now, about weird little things, I was just reminded of um, I, a very special guest that I had last summer. I don't know if she ever uh, looks at these things of mine, but um, let's call her uh, Yari Milp. Yari Milp was a very, very special person who came through, and um, she's in a creative field. And she's someone that I just got along with right away. We just liked each other right away, had lots and lots to talk about, and the conversation was just uncommon. It was very satisfying, very satisfying right away. Um, she would just say things, and, and as so often is the case with um, my INFJ loved ones, I feel like what they say is complete. You know, like I don't, for once, you know, blah, 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 blah. For once, like when they make an observation about something, I have nothing to add at all quite often. And I just feel so warm and verklempt about it, you know, I, uh, that I don't have anything to add because they've just, they've said something that's interesting and unique and insightful and considered and true. I have nothing to add. You know, I just enjoy it. Um, so anyhow, she, she and I had that going right away. And uh, here about the funny little things that INFJs do. Here's 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 just a, again there there are just thousands of them over the years from all these different INFJs. But this this one's kind of illustrative. I was really tickled by it. So it so happened that I was talking to her about INFJ stuff. She had never before her visit here. She had never really heard of the model. Didn't know anything about it. And so I was just, she's like, well, she's like, well, tell me all about it. And she's multitasking. Okay. So I'm telling her about the different preference scales and yada, 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 and, you know, and checking it. And as she's listening and, and having a conversation with me, she's still getting on with her day. Okay. And I'll say something about this Yari. She also is someone who, you know, is very obviously creative in how she puts herself together. But she's got a very clean style, so it's very obviously bohemian and artistic. But it's also, again, there's no nothing random, nothing worn, and nothing like flying away or flouncy or 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 just an ac a happy accident. It's like everything has been decided that she puts on herself, um, and it also happens to be comfortable in her case. So, anyhow, so she's. She's doing, so she's doing this sort of free form thing while at the same time being very J. And, and so what she was doing is coming in, she decided, 
<laughs> so again, she she sort of like planned to have an independent day going out and doing God knows what all day all by herself, which she was just so obviously so happy to do, She'd be by herself all day out in the city and explore the city. And um, but she's you know she seemed I could tell that she was going through morning routines. I could just tell from the way she was doing things that she does this every day. Like she has this drink in the morning for breakfast, and she does these exercises or whatever and then she does you know she she knows exactly what she's putting in her bag before she goes out for the day like things are routinized to some extent and in a thoughtful way so she, there she was um while we were talking she she came to so i think so that she could i don't know but i can't know for sure but i think she was doing this for perhaps so that she could talk to me easily and also be on time for her idea of how the day is going to go in a somewhat structured free form yet structured free form way um and she didn't want to waste any time so she came out and she just popped herself down to sit in my living room floor on my living room floor to put her makeup on in this mirror I have kind of just lying on the floor there I, I like it there so it's not mounted it's just kind of a weird jumble but it looks good and I like it so there it is and uh, so she just plops right down on the floor and and starts like putting her makeup on and she's also got some natural light that's always a good idea putting your makeup on in the natural light and that's coming in on the other side. And I'm just thinking that she's, she, so there she is. And she's just doing, so she's doing something really weird, like really unconventional um, to be doing her toilette this way. But, and it's very odd, but she's completely, you know, she's not embarrassed about it whatsoever. And she's thought about it. And it all does make sense when you, she didn't have to convince me, you know, I, that's kind of how I like to do things um, when I think about them for doing them. And, um, yeah, she's just chatting away and, and very like, you know, we we're talking about some of the preference scales and like giving examples of like introvert. And she's like, yep, yep, yep. Like again, just very, yep, that's right. Didn't hesitate about um, what the preferences were. And there were a couple she had questions about, but like quite, just quite decisive. So that's a little mini portrait of one like lovely, lovely uh, INFJ who's like massively creative massively and obviously operating on a very intuitive basis a lot of the time in her actions but who also is very together um, so she's again wild 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 but she's also together and organized and has her structures that you know facilitate her ex self-expression as a creative person and goes about that and uh, I just thought that was a great example so there you go. There's some rambles about some real life INFJs I know, and I hope that somebody got something out of that. <laughs> ah, thanks for listening.